If you're a perfectionist and want to loot every single chest, mine every single gold and bathe every single pickle and brute in a bastion, then this video might be for you. As of recording this, the latest release version is 1.20.4, so if there will be any changes to Bastion or Mob AI, they'll be included in the description. Also, I'll update the title if this works for future versions. Let's begin. There are four Bastion types. Treasure, which consists of two big ramparts and a giant box connected by a bridge that's above a lava moat. Housing, which has two ramparts with eight housing units. Bridge, which is a structure that resembles a piglin face with a gold chalice on its tongue. And Stables, which has three randomly generated ramparts and up to 32 hoglin stables layered on top of each other. We're now going to cover each bastion in great detail. How it generates, how to recognize the bastion type and how to find chests and gold. But before we do that, we'll talk about how to deal with piglin brutes. Now we can't rush into the Bastion without getting brutally chopped up, so we need to understand how their AI works. In short, it's weird. Piglin Brutes aggressively charge at you if they have a line of sight with the player or if you've hit a Piglin. So if you want to avoid getting hit by a Brute, pillaring up is the best thing to do, unless there is an angry Piglin with a crossbow. However, pillaring up two blocks isn't enough. For some reason, if the Brutes are close enough, placing a second block still makes them think that there is one block and they will jump, which means their attack range can still reach you. So the logical way to prevent that is building up three blocks and mining one below you, because they can't reach you if you're two blocks higher. Or so I thought. There's one flaw with this strategy. If the surface isn't flat and the brutes are jumping up a block to go near you, the apex of their jump is high enough to actually hit you, which can cost your life and items. So make sure you are three blocks high up, and if you are two blocks high up, make sure that the 5x5 area where they are standing is flat so they don't jump. And as it turns out, they do jump. If the brute is even closer to you, they will hit you even if you build up three blocks. So be quick or make sure they're far away enough. Once you're up, you can move about while sneaking and the piglin brutes will follow you. We're going to abuse this mechanic to lure them into a trap. The lava bucket is your best friend and will help you so much when you're dealing with piglin brutes. When you're two blocks up, you can dig a two block deep hole for the brutes to fall into and place lava there to kill them. Make sure not to accidentally hit the brute while digging the hole, otherwise that will make them jump up a bit, hitting you in the process. Or you can pour the lava bucket on them instead of digging a hole. Here's a neat mechanic. If you have a brute on the other side and there's a platform or lava below, you can make the brute fall down by placing lava at its feet and removing it again. This makes the brute think they can walk towards you for some reason and they will plummet to their doom. Sometimes they do this even without lava, so experiment with different scenarios. Treasure has only one variant. Both ramparts, the box and the bridge will generate the same way. If you go upstairs from the bridge, you'll see two chests in the right rampart and one double chest in the left rampart. Above this floor is a staircase with a wall. There are hidden gold blocks in the wall. Five gold blocks in each rampart that generate in these exact spots, each having a 70% chance to generate. Below this staircase are two more gold blocks that generate alongside the stairs where the chests are. The leftmost gold block has a 70% chance to generate and the rightmost always generates. The bottom portions of the ramparts contain no chests and no gold blocks. The bridge always generates with two gold blocks. The treasure section of the bastion consists of three parts. The top floor, which doesn't generate anything valuable. The middle floor, which can generate 0 to 3 chests. The bottom floor, which can generate 0 to 4 chests with treasure in the center and a magma cube spawner. The middle floor chests are always indicated by eight smooth basalt in the center. The chests are always generated on the left side of the indicated wall at Y level 59, which is the exact same level as the lava moat. The bottom floor chests are always indicated by different chain length of the lanterns. 
The chests are always generated on the right side of the wall. The bottom treasure in the middle has four different configurations named by TWAGs and the community. The hashtag, which contains 19 gold blocks and a single chest. Double chest, which contains 12 gold blocks and two chests. The cage, which contains 16 gold blocks and a single chest. And 1812, which contains 13 gold blocks and a single chest. Any chest generated in these four configurations will always contain a netherite upgrade smithing template alongside with very decent loot, mainly diamond armor and netherite. There are three sections where piglin brutes appear. Let's start with the bridge section, since this is the best place to start raiding this bastion type. Start at the moat and mine these three out of four blocks, keeping only the third one. Then count three blocks and pillar up here. Once you pillar up six blocks in total, place a block next to this one and mine these two blocks so that the brutes cannot reach you from here and continue pillaring up to the gold block. Check your surroundings for any piglins with crossbows so you won't get shot off and potentially die and mine the gold block. Alert all piglin brutes in the bridge section. At most three brutes can generate here. Sometimes they will get replaced by a sword-wielding piglin. Stand on the pillar you built and sneak to the lower left corner of the pillar. This will trick the piglins to fall onto that one block we left, but most of them will fall into the lava below. Once all brutes are gone, you can pick up the second gold block. Don't worry about brutes landing on that block, as they will wait for your next move. Once you loot the entire bastion, you can claim your reward by mining that block below them. Sometimes you'll have an extra piglin brute from the rampart. Make him charge after you and go back to your pillar and trap him using the same method. Next is the rampart section. This one requires a setup. Go up here, mine these three blocks. Now if you have open terrain, mine out a hallway two blocks deep with a one block hole at the end. Here you will create the hole by mining two blocks down and placing two blocks to enclose it. Place two blocks here to help piglins pathfind and create a bridge with four blocks. Place a gold block here, mine it and wait. Hit a piglin once you see one. Hold shift so that the crossbow piglins won't shoot you. While they're falling, mine a three block deep hallway, walk to the end of it and come back. Some leftover piglins might fall in, then use the lava. The reason we dug a three block deep hallway is because some piglins will get stuck over here. Because they think they can pathfind towards me. Digging that hallway will make the piglins go over here, and now the shortest path to me is to go above the chest and down here into the hole. Hi. And if you have terrain, we'll mine these three blocks, mine out that hallway just like before. This time we'll just mine a two block hole, and then we'll mine a hallway four blocks deep and three blocks high. 12 blocks in total. Place a gold block and do the same as before. Once you don't hear a piglin brute, or don't see piglin brute in the subtitles, you can freely loot the chests above. Sometimes, due to how terrain generates, not all piglins will fall into the trap. If there is a piglin brute still alive, you'll have to improvise based on prior knowledge. You can either create another trap or reuse the same trap by luring them. And lastly, the treasure section. This one requires either an enderpearl, which is risky, a boat, which is somewhat safer, and nothing, which requires a bit of creativity. With the pearl, throw it on the lowest bridge, preferably not close to the piglin brutes, and immediately pillar up two or three blocks. Now I died a lot trying this, which means that somehow using the pearl and then pillaring up is much worse than taking fall damage and pillaring up. 
I'm not sure if the ender pearl is bugged with the AI, but this pillaring method doesn't really work with the ender pearl. So instead, immediately as you use an ender pearl on the lowest bridge, head yourself down to the lowest platform and jump to this block. Use the lava trick to get rid of any piglin brutes and pillar back onto the bridge to disable the magma cube spawner a bit safer. Once you handle that situation, jump down here and lure the Pilim Brutes exactly here and get rid of them with the lava bucket. If there are magma cubes in the way, get rid of them. With the boat, place it and fall onto the lowest platform of the treasure, which is always on the left when you enter the treasure section. Dismount the boat in the air and immediately head for the same spot. You can get rid of the Brutes from this distance while being out of range from the magma cube spawner. Here's something to note when dealing with magma cubes. The large magma cube will die on a fully charged hit and a critical hit with a stone axe. The medium magma cube dies when your axe is more than halfway charged and the small magma cubes can be killed with spam clicking. If there are brutes on the bridge above, you can jump to this block. And most of the time, the brutes will fall onto a block or into lava. Otherwise, go to the bridge. Lure the brutes below if necessary and mine the spawner. If you don't like using the pearl or the boat, and there are multiple bridges, then you can jump on them as you go down. If there are no bridges, then use blocks to go down. Beware of piglin brutes that might be nearby, and use one of the previous strategies to get rid of the brutes. If you don't want piglins jumping from above while mining the gold, you can prepare a distraction so that they might ignore you when they see the gold block. There's also a funny bug that occurs where piglins make excessive noise due to bug MC-252486. If you got chests generated in the bottom or middle floor, then most likely than not there will be brutes. For the bottom floor, lure them towards the lava and using the lava trick they'll fall right in. In the middle floor, if you find a brute that is lower than the chest, then you can ignore him because he can't get to you when you loot the chest. Otherwise, you can place another rack and mine them below him. Or if you're approaching from the bridge, you can lure them to go below and not reach you anymore. And that's all there is to know about the treasure bastions. Here's a demonstration on how looting this bastion looks like. For all demonstrations, I'll have an unenchanted iron pickaxe, a stone axe, a stone shovel, a lava bucket, two stacks of blocks, a good food source like cooked pork chop or steak, a boat, some wood and a crafting table. I also have iron armor equipped with a gold helmet so that regular piglins won't attack me. Note that gold and iron helmets have the same armor value. First we're gonna get rid of the piglin brutes on the bridge. Then we're getting rid of the piglins from the ramparts.
I noticed the piglin brute still alive, so I waited for him to notice me. We loot the chests. And start digging the gold blocks. I hear a piglin so I instinctively block the stairs. In this rampart you can dig down to y equals 83 and dig out of the wall and then grab the guaranteed gold block. For the treasure section, I decide to use the boat. Once I was certain there are no piglin brutes, I decide to disable the spawner. Prepare the distraction. And mine the gold. In the meantime, I notice that there are two chests. Pillar up. I see basalt. So I build up 16 blocks in total. That's the number of blocks to get to Y59. and head towards the lava moats. And I'm done with the treasure bastion. Housing has three variants. The right rampart is always the same and contains three chests. The left rampart either generates without a chest, a single chest, or a triple chest, just like the right rampart. The lower section of the rampart always generates with a double chest. Housing is unique and loved by speedrunners because the gold generated inside the ramparts are guaranteed. You will always find 17 gold blocks. One gold block behind this wall after following the first set of stairs. Three gold blocks after following the second set of stairs. In this path after the first set of stairs. 
you'll find nine gold blocks underneath. And on the back side of the bastion, which can be accessed from those previous gold blocks, you'll find three more gold blocks with an extra one diagonally. That's everything in the ramparts. Let's move on to the housing units. There are eight of them and each have four layers. There's always a chest in the center with soul sand and nether wart. Gold can generate in the housing units, but each have a 25% chance of generating. So it's not worth learning which ones to look for. We'll look at how chests generate instead. The only layers that we care about are the first and second layers. No chests can generate above the second layer. The chests always generate with a lantern. So if you see one, there's definitely a chest. This basalt shape that looks like an upside down U located on both sides always generates with a chest and it's always on the first floor. This zigzag pattern, this stone brick with two holes, these four basalts and among us always generates with a chest and it's always on the second layer. Here's a funny clip of me getting scared by a piglin brute because I didn't look up. And now for the demonstration. So I use a generic strategy for the remaining three bastions because I haven't found a proper one that works in every scenario like the treasure. Therefore, I had to improvise a lot. And uh, it really depends on how uh, the nether generates and how many piglin broods generate because sometimes they get replaced by regular piglins and sometimes there are piglin broods. Now here we can uh, take inspiration from treasure and mine a hallway to trap the piglins just like we did before. So that's what I meant by generic strategy. In this case, there are no piglin brutes because you're not gonna get a piglin brute every single time. Now notice how the piglins aren't always angry. They'd rather be scared from zombified piglins than attacking me. Now heading up those stairs for those three gold blocks. And I decided to go down for those nine gold blocks. You put a block above you so that piglins won't drop down once you start mining the gold. Now you can loot the chest from here if you haven't already. And here we build ourselves a bridge if we have open terrain and if you're inside netherrack you just mine through the netherrack. Once you see cracked blackstone you can mine those gold blocks. Now this is partially in basalt delta so as you can see some lava and basalt generates inside the bastion. Now for the piglins up here we're going to use lava, so we put two blocks here to stop the lava from flowing down. And pillar up so that the piglin brutes jump down. Get rid of the piglin so that he won't get angry at me once I open the chest. And here we got a single chest. Now I decided to do the chest last, but you can do it right from the start. So I noticed three chests. All of them have the upside down U, so you notice immediately that you have three chests. Got myself a better pickaxe, which is very nice. And now I'm searching for the second layer. If there are any chests. And I found one. It's the zigzag pattern. And that's the whole bastion done. Here's a clip of me getting rid of a piglin brute that is chasing me.
And here is another way to get rid of the brutes, by mining a gold block, punching the piglins and luring them into the same trap. And here are the housing units without lava, and me creating a trap for the piglins. Bridge has four variants. Both ramparts can be either short, containing a single chest, or long, containing a triple chest. On the bridge itself is a chalice that contains 16 gold blocks. The upper left section always generates a chest containing a lodestone and it's the only bastion where you can find one. On the right side of the bastion, where the lava fountains are, is a wall that can generate 0 to 4 gold blocks. If you go back to the back of the fountains, there can be 0 to 3 gold blocks inside the last fountain, and below that, 0 to 2 gold blocks can also generate inside. On the lower left portion of the rampart is a cave that contains chiseled black stone, behind which can contain 0 to 3 gold blocks. And that's everything. Despite it being a cool looking bastion, it actually doesn't have that much. Also, if you want quartz as a souvenir, you can get 4 quartz blocks and 2 smooth quartz blocks, which are for some reason on the left pillar, but not on the right pillar. I cannot tell if this is intended or not. So I start at the chalice and mine 16 gold blocks. Then I head for the bridge, killing any piglin brutes and hoglins that are in the way. Then from here we're gonna pillar up to this lava fountain. If there are brutes, you can get rid of them like this. Lead them to that block and break the block underneath. While professionally on fire, we head over here and build a trap for the piglins because we're going to mine the gold blocks. Anger the piglin brutes. Usually when there's terrain, like this nether rack, then usually no piglin brute will uh, charge here. But if you've got uh, no terrain, then there might be a piglin brute that can wander from the lodestone chest over to you. Now we have a triple chest here and we just pour lava on the piglin brutes. They're dumb enough to fall down. Then we head up here, and here there is going to be a brute that is going to guard the lodestone chest. So we place a block here and alert him. Jump back. And he's gonna stand on that block and you mine it below him, and he'll drop right into lava, just like me. We'll jump back towards the block and loot the lodestone chest. So if you mine this nether rack and there is air, you have a triple chest, otherwise you have a single chest. If it's a single, we will mine through this hallway and once we see nether rack after the stone bricks, we can dig down towards the single chest. Then right on this stone brick we will mine forward and once we see netherrack on the ground we're going to mine forward and down until we see the part of the bastion. Mm -hmm. Now navigating to the gold blocks you just touch the left wall like you're going around a pillar. Now sometimes uh, the gold is guarded by a piglin brute, so I preemptively prepared a trap, but he didn't generate here. Hmm? 
Before we go for the gold blocks, we will get rid of any piglins that are nearby. So we're gonna go towards the chiseled blocks and we're gonna mine these two and then we will place two blocks over here and get the gold blocks if any generated. We've got two out of three. Then for the rest of the gold we're gonna place this block here, mine it once lava isn't next to it, then mine the block below it and then dig down. If you mine the blocks too quickly then the lava will spread so mine it slowly. Then if you mine behind this wall you will find up to two gold blocks. And once you're done, you can leave the bastion or take those six quartz as a souvenir. Here's a case where Epiglin Brute spawned on a bridge and how to deal with him. Here's how the single chest looks like on the right side of the bastion. And here's the triple chest on the left side. The Stables Bastion has 108 variants. Yes, 108 variants. It has three ramparts and each top portion of a rampart has three different ways it can generate. A single chest, also known as diagonal chest, double chest, also known as lantern chest, and triple chest, which generates with guaranteed four gold blocks. With the top portion covered, there are two ways the lower portions can generate, either with a single chest, known as bad gap, because there's a gap two blocks high outside the rampart, or with hidden gold blocks, known as good gap, because there's a gap one block high outside the rampart. There are up to four gold blocks in this wall, six gold blocks under these blocks, one gold above where the four gold were, and one more above that. The good and bad gaps generate only in the left and right rampart. The middle rampart always generates the same. It's next to the stable staircase and always contains a single chest. Let's get to how to recognize if we get a bad gap good gap, a diagonal, lantern or triple chest. It's gonna be a lot, so prepare to take notes. We'll start at the staircase chest. For the left rampart, if you mine this block and you see either air or nether rack, it's a bad gap, which means a single chest. If you see a black stone instead, then it's a good gap, which means gold blocks. Going upstairs and looking at this wall, if you see cracked black stone like this, it's a bad gap. Otherwise, if you see the wall a bit cleaner, then it's a good gap. You can also check by mining these two blocks. If it's easier to go inside, then it's a bad gap. If you're at the roof of the stables, you can identify the chest types. If you see basalt, it's a triple chest. If you see a lantern, it's a lantern chest, which means there's a second one on top. And if you see a hallway that goes diagonally, then you've guessed it, it's a diagonal chest, and there's only one. Now if you want to identify and loot the top chests immediately from both gaps in case of bad terrain, here are all six cases. But first, we'll learn how to get to the gaps in the first place. If you've got a left bad gap, then you go take this route. Seeing a netherrack or air confirms that you've got a bad gap, and you can access the chest from the back. If you've got a right bad gap, then you mine these two blocks and go down the stairs to access the chest. If you've got a left good gap, then you go upstairs and mine these two blocks to create a hallway and then go downstairs for the gold. And if you've got a right good gap, then you either mine the same blocks as before until you have a hallway, or for a quicker route, you can mine these two blocks. Now for the six cases. Let's start with the bad gap. Face away from the chest and head right. If you see some stone bricks to the left, then we've got a diagonal chest. Mining this block will lead you to the chest. If you see a passage that keeps going, you've got a lantern chest.
The second chest can be accessed if you mine up next to the lantern. If you see stone bricks to the right, then you've got a triple chest and you need to make a staircase to access it. Let's move on with the good cap. From the gold, head upstairs until you get to your familiar hallway. To your left is where you'll go to the chests. If you see a passage, you've got a diagonal chest. Same strategy as with the bad cap. If you mine this block and create a stairway, then see a nice flat surface with a lantern on the left then you've got a lantern chest. If you mine this block and create a stairway, then see a lantern above and to the right and the floor is not so flat, then you've got a triple chest. Now that you're familiarized with the ramparts, let's move on to the stables themselves. Just like with housing, we'll ignore the gold blocks because they also have a 25% chance of appearing. You'll mostly find one or two gold blocks on average. The stables are composed of four floors or layers, each having four outer stables and four inner stables with a staircase connected in the middle. There are two out of nine inner stables that contain a chest. The rest are empty. This means that a stable's chest have a 22.2% chance of generating, which means the chests only generates in the inner stables and are always indicated by two lanterns that are offset by one block. So, if you're looking from this angle and you can count two lanterns next to each other, you have a stables chest. Because of how randomized this bastion is, I'll divide many examples into parts.
Before we wrap things up, let's have a look how to tell which Bastion type you have if your Bastion is buried in Netherrack. For single, it is how the chest is positioned. And for the triple, it's the spacing between the single and the double chest, or the holes in the ground. Now, before you start asking questions, what about the wind charge? What about the maze? Can they be used in Bastions? And the answer is, of course. You can use any strategy that suits for you. It's more so a guide how to do this with early game items, but you can definitely use late game items for Bastions to make your life much easier. And that's about everything I have to say about Bastions. I would like to thank the speedrunning community, but mostly TWAX, 11 Billion, and K4 for providing useful information. Without them, this video wouldn't exist, so go check out their respective channels. Thank you so much for showing interest and watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And as a bonus, I've searched 10 random seeds, picked 40 bastions, 10 of each type, and saved them as separate worlds. That's 400 bastions in total, and I will attempt to loot all of them. I will most likely stream it here on YouTube, but don't expect a high quality stream with commentary. I will post a poll, which Bastion type would you like to see first? And based on the results, we'll start with 100 Bastions of that type. Anyway, that's all you'll get from me. See you next time. Oh.